Hi guys, uh, this is my first garden related video and um, I titled it My World is Dying because quite frankly that's what I'm seeing and uh, I'm seeing it around me, I'm seeing it here in South Dakota, I'm seeing it a lot on the web, as a matter of fact I'll leave a couple of links in the description which will take you to a site that really really covers the dying trees but I'm going to take a little walk around and show you where I'm at here this spring um, to kind of for all of you who have subscribed for a couple of years or whatever I got I got hurt pretty bad last well the, the last summer was the summer from hell I got hurt I fell off a barn in August but prior to that well, starting with the spring, I started seeing changes in things around here. Uh, just, just real subtle changes in plants, and just things that I, you know, that only, only someone that is as familiar as I am with this, with this would know, would would notice. And uh, and it's continued on. And of course, last summer, then as as. The summer went on and we entered into the heat and the drought and uh, I've never seen anything like it. My garden just completely dried up and I mean I, I did all right with all my spring stuff you know and but the, everything everything my second crops completely stopped. I mean the tomato plants were up three feet probably you know I maybe got a dozen tomatoes off each plant and they just stopped they were covered with flowers and they just stopped. The first row of corn I planted, uh, I got corn off of. The second row, by the time it started this pollination process, the heat, the blast furnace was on. And it was like, you know, it was very hot. It was well, well over 100 degrees for weeks with the wind blowing. And it, and, and it wasn't a matter of not having enough water. I had plenty of water. You can water, you could water till the cows come home, but it didn't do any good because the plant simply could not metabolize the, the water um, fast enough, you know, to to get up into those little buds while they were while they were doing their thing, and uh, so everything just stopped. And basically, at that point, everything that would have been around the first of around the middle of August, I guess. And at that point, actually, that's when the tree everything stopped. And from that point on, the trees started to deteriorate. The leaves on this tree started to deteriorate. And to make a long story a little shorter, by the uh, by the first of September, you know, leaves were dropping off trees, and we had, you know, it was funny. It was it was random, different species, different. You know, it happened in all all different speeds, and and uh, but basically. The leaves all dropped off the trees, and what what happened, in my opinion, is that they simply went into shock, as did these all these plants, and and you know they they, they run the chlorophyll back down into the roots, roots just just to just to you know survive. Anyway, that was it. I fortunately enough, I had a lot of food, you know, left over from the year before. I, I canned so much stuff and. And I was, was didn't go hungry, but I, I don't want another summer like that. It's not going to leave me very in a very good situation. So I'm really praying that. And so anyway, I got hurt in August. I fell off a barn. I busted my leg up real bad. I was in a wheelchair for weeks and weeks and weeks and blah blah blah. And I, but I wasn't able to do my greenhouse. So I started this spring. You know, I usually start out with a thousand plants, and I started with none. So I, I'm behind the behind the eight ball on this one a little bit, but I'm I'm dealing with it. And and on these beds, I just planted. I just come out here like this one here has got carrots, and I don't even know what is in here really. I you know I, I threw flower seeds and everything. Big sunflower volunteer. Uh, this has got garlic in here, and it's also just a bunch of flowers. Now, here's an example. If you look at these nasturtiums, this isn't really an overly healthy plant, but it grew from seed, starting, starting right here. And you know, there, these, these, I, I think will probably go ahead and do this. You know, be all right. You know, outgrow it, if you will. 
and for some reason, same soil, same soil, both both boxes, and these here. I hope I'm getting this. The sun's so bright I can't see what's on the camera, but as you can see, they're all curled up, shriveled up. Now I had a pile of broad asparagus in here, but the, it was a fail too, really, because a lot of the plants that I transplanted from across the road. I didn't didn't produce, so I got to replant it this fall. But if you look at these nasturtiums, there's absolutely no question that there's something very weird going on. This row over here, I planted in peas. They came up, looked beautiful, just shriveled up and died. Not a thing has changed in this soil. I mean, this, I built this soil. I know exactly what it is. It's not it's not a deficiency. It's not some kind of a a fungus in the soil. It's none of those things. Now, in general, I've noticed that it just things just don't are, just don't are not taking off like they usually do. Now these are little pepper plants that I put. That, you know, I should be seeing quite a bit of growth out of this plant at this point. Uh, these ones are still immature plants, but yet they're they're all already flowering. I bought this stuff, so I don't know what is what anyway. But it's just, it doesn't, the, the, things just don't seem to really, you know, usually when I take them out of my greenhouse and put them in this soil out here, which is unbelievable good stuff, they just take right off, and, and, and it's just much slower, it seems. But, they, you know, they're coming. Uh, cabbages look okay, except for I got one that just bummed out for some reason. Anyway, uh... At the end of this video, I, I'm going to include a bunch of snapshots that I've taken around of trees that were absolutely perfectly healthy a year ago. Beautiful, beautiful maples and, and uh, pine trees and spruce trees and, you know, just, and you'll, and you'll see. They're dead. They're just completely dead now. And very, like I say, it's, it's random. It's not enough necessarily a species or a place where it is or... It's, it's just random, and it's happening all over the world. Geoengineering, of spraying a little heavy metals, you know, into our atmosphere on a regular basis. Suppose that has anything to do with it? A little, you know, a little aluminum or barium or strontium or whatever the frick it is that they, they're spraying or they're poisoning us with. Uh, I don't know. It, it really upsets me. And then on top of that, you know, why I'm on it, why I'm on a rant, we have, uh, you know, Fukushima. Well, this is South Dakota. We're right in the in the jet stream a lot of the times, and and we're getting radiated. So you know, you 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 ask why aren't the plant? Why do the plants not look normal? Well, duh. You know, last year, last spring, I transplanted four really healthy little marigolds into each one of these little fruit trees around the bottom. They grew in bushy, bushy, bushy. They were up probably two, I mean, really healthy little plants, probably by the middle of June. Looked beautiful. Full of buds. Started looking weird, started getting pale looking. Within a week, they shriveled up and died. All of them right here, these four plants. Everywhere else I had marigolds. They didn't do that. Now, you go figure. I've had marigolds. I had marigolds the, the year before, and they grew... You know, they were huge plants. Same soil, same plants. Actually, it was the same it was the same seed. I took the seed from those marigolds. So, anyway, and any, now this is my this is where I usually grow all my melons and squash and cucumbers and stuff. And of course, I usually pepper it with plants, but I don't I don't spend a lot of money, so I didn't go out and buy a bunch of plants. So everything that's in here has come up from seed, and it's kind of an experiment. We'll see what's going to happen. Uh, I, you know, I really miss the flowers. I usually grow lots of flowers. But I had some real sick geraniums I transplanted out here, or my girlfriend did, and I really wanted her to plant them deeper. But, uh, and then I just threw, I usually put all kinds of flower plants in this bed too, and I just peppered it with full of seeds. There's some potatoes in these mounds. Uh, this this is a 
This is a row that I bought. This is a row of uh, all kinds of leaf lettuce, and that's mostly for the chickens. And anyway, I'm not going to go over it. I did this. In the other long bed, there's three rows of beans, green beans. And then the farther bed, the one I'll walk over there. In the farther bed, there, there's three rows of corn. And you can see I started mulching it yesterday. That's as far as I got before I cracked a beer and a friend of mine come over and we burned one. That was the end of the work for the day. But got my old truck hauling mulch around. I was going to sell this old truck because it's kind of just junk, you know, it's kind of in the way, but I can't, it's too, I got too much sentimental value. So I said, forget it, I'm not selling it. Anyway, my chickens, I don't even know where they are, they're on the other side, they're all doing good, about half of them are going into a pot very soon because they've really cut back. Jeepers are all inside for some reason, that's very strange. Yeah, they're, all, they're, all, they're, you know, three years old, a bunch of them, so I'm going to, I'm going to, but I'm not killing them. You know, I have standard rule, I don't kill things. I mean, I don't kill anything, very, I'll kill mosquitoes, that's about it, or house flies. But I don't kill things as a rule, and last summer I killed a bunch of things. I killed, I shot several rabbits around here. Although, while I'm on it, anybody that has a problem with rabbits, I got a solution. You don't have to kill them. You take popsicle sticks and you dip them into vast, into uh, like Vicks, menthol shit, and you put that stuff on it, and you stick the sink those, sink those popsicle sticks right beside every little broccoli plant or every little cabbage or you know they go after the kale crops, and you and they won't touch it. You'll never have a problem with a rabbit on that plant again. I learned that a couple of years ago. So you're never too old to learn new tricks. Anyway, uh, that's about it. I ha like I say, we're only you know not even two weeks after frost free. So I guess I'm I'm doing all right. I was kind of worried about things because I didn't have a greenhouse and shit. But anyway, uh, I, the, the, I'm really concerned. I think it's a really major issue what's happening with these trees for one thing, and more so than. You know, the the shit comes down. What goes up comes down. I mean, that's pretty pretty much basic. And and you know, it's it's been acknowledged. Monsanto's making aluminum-free resistant seeds. I mean, they know what they're doing. And how do you protect yourself if you're an organic gardener? You don't, unless you do everything undercover. Uh, there's a a station is anybody that doesn't know it, I figure most people do, but MP Gardner that he grows unbelievable vegetables all inside well not all, just in the greenhouse, but all winter, really unbelievable. Uh I don't know what to do. I, you know, all we can do is just keep informing people and maybe in time that they'll stop it. I d I don't know. It's a horrible, horrible thing, but uh take a look at the snapshots and and then look around, you know, take a ride around your town. Look, look at the, do the trees look normal? Does, does everything look the way it's supposed to? Uh, it's, you know, you'll find that once you open your eyes and really start looking for it, you're going to see it. If you don't, you're a lucky man or woman, woman whichever, because it's there, it's, all, it's everywhere I look. And I guess that's enough of my rant. And most of you know, I'm preaching to the choir. Most of you know that anyway. Anyway, it's kind of good to throw out some bullshit here for, uh, back on YouTube. I haven't made a video in a long time, so uh, I'll, I'm going to sit down. I got. I'd really like to go over this issue a little bit closer. And I have a lot of uh, information that I kind of. I'm going to try to compile into a short, you know. Uh,